Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be checking out Weird Egg and Crushing Finger. This is by Mason Lindroth. This is another LD28 game with the theme of You Only Get One. And in this case, well, the name is very descriptive actually. We have exactly what we just described, both a weird egg and a crushing finger. You can see my crushing finger right here on the island. It's a, a very interesting and bizarre art style that we've got here. It almost remar reminds me a bit of like some of the stuff that I used to see on the games back in the day on like the Mac OS 7 uh, when the graphical fidelity of things was not quite worked out and you had to do some workarounds and some compromises. So what we have here is an island made of what appears to be like clay uh, and then we've got like uh, different types of modeling here with uh, maybe dithering down the graphics so they look a little bit more lo-fi and then we've got this ocean which I'm not sure what that's made of. I like that my hand here I can use that as sort of a pointing device. And what we have as far as the actual game is some sort of a life sim with a very esoteric spin to it where we've got this egg in the center of the island that I'm going to poke. There's a little crack in it. Let's poke it again. Doesn't do anything. Let's poke it again. There's another crack in it. Let's poke it again. Doesn't do anything. Let's poke it again. Still doesn't do anything. Poke it again. Oh, it broke. I had a feeling eventually something would happen. So what we're left with is some sort of little paramecium creature that's hatched out of this egg. And we're just going to kind of let it do its thing. Oh, it turned into a person. And it's going to walk around and presumably do something. Oh, it built a home. And all of a sudden we've got some music to go along with the wild uh, frequencies that are happening. That was the, the first little moment we had was just generally just having this just crazy waveforms happening in the background. And now we've actually got a little bit of like an acoustic guitar. I mean, it's more electric acoustic chiming in and the, you know there's different uh, little habitats showing up we've got a cone-headed man here with a trident i guess this is his cone-headed house that we can kind of flick around oh they're killing things all right i'm not cool with that i'm gonna squish you uh and now we've got these little things floating around that i don't know what to do with them i, I assume these are souls uh there was a little bit of a description that happened here and it says uh in the actual ld page oh, i'm gonna make sure i stay on top of these dudes with the pitchforks i'm not after you know, having a, a warlike society here, I just gotta make sure I don't kill everybody. Oh, I think these are wizards that just showed up. I wanna push the wizards into souls to collect. And that also makes a pretty weird sound as well. The souls are actually stacking up in the top of the screen right there. I'm just gonna have a dividing line. Push all the bad people over to this side of the town, and keep all the good people over on this side. Uh, that way we don't have to get into fights too much. Oh god, there's a horrible monster! Oh, it's eating the wizards. Is that good or bad? It looks evil, so it probably is, right? Uh, I should read again from the actual page. Uh, collect souls of round glowing things by pushing the sorcerers identifiable by their blue robes into them. When you collect 13 souls, the humanoids will do a dance. This is the de facto victory condition. I had intended for this to be repeatable, but there were, like, bugs. Try not to let the ostensibly evil skulls overrun the island. I'm not sure how to stop them from overrunning the island. They certainly do seem evil, though. I'll give them that. Uh, kind of reminds me of something from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. There was a character with a, a bit of a facial thing going on like that. Also a little bit of the ood there. Uh, oh, the wizard is turning the people into worm creatures, I guess. That's probably bad. This is a difficult-to-manage little island. All of this chaos, born from one single egg, it appears. Can we get this uh, soul? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it melted that guy. I'm not sure where the wizards come from, but I can't really get to the soul if the skull creature is going to be in the way. Oh, he popped all the wizards again. All right, let's crush those. This is a really strange game, but I love games with this sense of, like, its own independent artistic spirit, where everything is just completely imaginative and bizarre. And all of the things that you're going to find in this game, if you didn't have that little readme that I read from, you're going to have to figure it out yourself. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. In this case, I feel like pairing it with this bizarre art style and presentation, I feel like it's probably a positive thing. You know, I can crush these people too if I really wanted to, but I kind of feel like a scumbag when I do that. But it is one way to get their souls out. You know, if you're in a hurry to try and get to the victory condition, uh, it looks like the skulls are multiplying now, and I can't seem to get rid of them. I can't even crush them with houses. I can just kind of push them all around. It's very interesting, too, that the, the hand is this, uh, like, a monochrome grayscale when everything else has such vivid color to it. It's reminding me of uh, a certain game, too. Is it Neverhood? 
not entirely remembering which one. Oh, I know Samorost also has a little bit of the same vibe to it, but uh, very, very different in terms of gameplay style, I have to say. Uh, did I get that soul there? I want the, the humans to do a dance. Alright, all of you are getting squished, because you're all evil where carry tridents with you. Alright, just get the wizard up there. There we go. Oh yeah, there it is. Victory is mine. I could easily see this turning into something much more elaborate and complex. I mean, right now I appreciate that there's a certain level of simplicity to it. And, of course, you know, being made in 48 hours, that's just the way things are gonna go. But I would love to see it if this was developed into something much bigger and more uh, bizarre than it even is right now. You know, what if the Skulls do overrun the island? Then maybe the Skulls can have their own subbreed of people that can exist, and maybe you want to take it in that direction. There could be this whole, you know, evolution aspect to things. Maybe well, one day something decides to visit the island for some reason. And uh, I could be a horrible person and push this skull right onto all those people, but I think I'm not going to do that. But yeah, there's a lot of different options. You could have a certain type of tree all of a sudden will blossom for some reason. Maybe you need to figure out what that tree does. Maybe if you give it to the dudes with the pointy heads, that'll give them some special ability. Whereas if you give it to the humans, maybe it'll give them the ability to fight back. There's hundreds of options that we could have. I mean, this is just a god game. But the fact that it's so bizarre kind of lets you take it to a new level. It's so weird, too, that there's these dudes that just, like, they're kind of passively just wandering around destroying everything, and you can't do anything about them. They're just, they're here to stay. So the longer I play this, the more of these I assume will accumulate. And I like that you can push the houses around, too, because it means if you wanted to, you could, like, have a settlement in one space, or you could potentially even use the houses to maybe block off the skulls if you were particularly strategic about it. I think it actually might be possible to do. You push them all up here. And can they can they squeeze through these little cracks? They only seem to want to make about three houses, so anything past that, I'm not sure I can really help. But I thought it would be interesting. I like that the buildings kind of snap back a little bit, too. Yeah, I've totally constrained them. Uh, well, maybe not totally. They seem to want to still move around. But I have given them a corner of the island to inhabit now. Unless they find their way out. There we go. That seems like a fairly fail-safe position for them to be in. And all of the people dancing have all found their own little spot. And they seem to be happy living there, dancing together. These wizards are quite mysterious looking as well. They sort of seem like a bat people or something. Oh, the skulls are kind of getting a little bit uh, cheeky, aren't they? Well, this one's just out. It's just going to murder everyone, I guess. All right, well, the skulls have gotten free. Kind of of my own choosing, I suppose. So I guess why don't we just eradicate everyone on the island and see if that causes anything different to happen. Sorry, guys. You had a good run of it. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. The developer just didn't program enough things for you to be able to do, so... So you're gonna have to die. Sorry, guys. Well, life usually finds a way. And in this case, since we still have houses, uh, that seems to mean that they'll continue to live on. Oh, I forgot. This is the house where the regular people come out of. And now that they're dying in great numbers, it seems like they're still uh, repopulating the island. But since I had things set up the way they were before, I guess they just stopped showing up because we reached some sort of maximum capacity or something. Well, anyway, <laughs> I think that's about as far as we can take Weird Egg and Crushing Finger. Surprisingly delightful in a, an irreverent, bizarre kind of way. Oh, something is changing. The skull seems to be evolving into a new being, perhaps. Its head has some sort of protrusion on top of it now. What if I just, like, poke the crap out of this thing? Does that help me or hurt me in any way? Doesn't seem like it. Well, I'm kind of curious to know if anything else will happen Oh, that one also has that thing on its head. Uh, but yeah, I don't necessarily know that, that there is much else, so I think, if anything, I'll let you guys find that out if you'd like. To go, just go check it out. I mean, it's totally free. You're going to have a web version of this. You don't even have to download anything. Open it up in your browser. Play around with a weird egg with your crushing finger and see if you can come up with any new uh, angles on this. And what would you like to see if the developer was to uh, implement more to this game? Would you add anything? Would you subtract anything? Would you have any uh, suggestions for the art style or the music? I kind of like the way it is. I think that the, the colors and the, the music being so lo-fi kind of go well together. It feels very homespun. I mean, it is an indie game after all, right? So there is that. It's sort of a celebration of indie spirit in a weird way. Anyway, I think I'm getting a bit too grandiose. So I think we'll wrap up this episode. Another interesting one for sure. 
Uh, but again, if you want to check it out, link's going to be right in the description. And uh, while you're there, if you want, go ahead and check out my other social media information, like my Twitter, my Facebook, my Twitch page, where I stream occasionally, and of course, indie-impressions.com, where you can find over 600 other videos in the series, as well as many other LD games that I've covered in the past, and they're all sortable by tags and such. And if you want to check out just free games, you're welcome to do that as well. There's tags for that, too. Uh, but that is going to do it for another day, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I know a fairly short episode. When the LD coverage is over, the episodes will get a bit longer. But for now, uh, the games are bite-sized, being made in 48 hours. So we're working with it the way we can. But I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope you'll consider leaving your support. And I will see you, uh, see you next time. See you tomorrow. Have a great night, guys. Talk to you later.